This is a video of a CIDH CISS foundation shaft at the Highway 1 and 17 project in Santa Cruz, California. It will demonstrate that when the casings were extended to the bedrock interface, caving soils and large amounts of water intrusion would not occur. Okay, now this slide shows the one of the log of test borings at the Carbonated Creek Bridge with the four scenarios of pipe pile uh, superimposed upon it. Uh, they're numbered one through four going from left to right, as you can see. Uh, the first graphic indicates the pile profile as originally specified and shown in the contract documents. You can see that the, the gray portion of the pile is the steel casing, and it terminates uh, in the silty sands above the bedrock contact. And the uh, pink portion shows what Caltrans thought to be a rock socket at these elevations, which proved to be incorrect. Now, when we pointed this out to them during the course of construction, they issued change order 59, which increased the size of the casing uh, lengths to reach down to the uh, bedrock interface, the igneous layer uh, at the bottom of the silty sands that resided above it. You can see the extension in the yellow portion of the second graphic going from left to right there. And you can see the rock socket that was uh, specified to be uh, maintained um, per the original contract documents below the pile extension. Excuse me. Now, later, Caltrans apparently did some redesigning, and they shortened the rock socket to, the, it, to number three there, the third graphic. You can see how short that rock socket is uh, compared to the original rock socket length. Uh, but they maintained the casing extensions to uh, protect the hole down to the bedrock interface. Uh, then later, after the pipe mating problems materialized, uh, they unilaterally stripped the casing extensions from the, uh, from the contract in the absence of an executed change order, thereby forcing uh, the contractor to utilize slurry displacement methods in these caving, silty sands of this uh, Santa Margarita formation. You can also hear, see here that the silty sands are identified as the Santa Margarita formation. And as the evidence shows in our DRB briefs, this is not rock of any kind. Now let's compare this to the Branson Forty Creek Bridge. Now, at Branson Forty Creek Bridge, the soil profiles never even identified the Santa Marguerite Formation, and this is the only location where the contract documents correctly showed that the casings go all the way down to the igneous bedrock layer. At all other locations, the original casings terminated above the bedrock layer in silty sand, sandy silts, that were saturated and prone to caving. Now, when the casings go extend all the way down to the bedrock, the casing provides a seal to those caving soils and water intrusion and allows the contractor to evacuate the can in a controlled environment without the worry of caving soils and large volume of water intrusion. The following video clearly demonstrates that when the cans were extended to the bedrock interface, the hole was protected from caving soils and large volumes of water intrusion. This is a video of a cased shaft on the Highway 1 and 17 project in Santa Cruz, California. This, is, this shaft is at the Branch of Forty Creek Bridge. Uh, it is the only one where the uh, casings were extended to the bedrock interface as required and specified. And we put a uh, camera down this uh, shaft to demonstrate the fact that when the cans or the, uh, or the casings were extended to the bedrock interface, uh, that uh, the 
whole was stabilized from caving soils, from the saturated sandy soils that would otherwise cave into the hole, and that the um, that the casing would seal the water at the ca at the bedrock interface. And as we go down this shaft, you can see the <coughs> excuse me, you can see the uh, chill rings that were installed into the cans by the contractor. And as we go down further, you'll see the interface between the casing and the rock. And then you'll see the uh, igneous rock core, uh, or the, uh, or the cylinder created by the core, a smooth uh, rock face. And very little, if any, water is streaming down the face of that rock, as you can see. And as we get down to the bottom of the shaft, you'll notice the uh, water vibrating a little bit, but um, that vibration is not caused by inflow of water. It's caused by the impeller vibrations from the pump. <clears throat> when you look close at the bottom of the pump, there's a, a screen around the impeller. That screen is about uh, four inches high, and you can see that the uh, top of the screen, or the first uh, slot and a half, or two slots, is actually outside of the water. So this pump is actually pumping air right now. It's not pumping any water because it's already evacuated all of the water it possibly can because the water is below uh, the impeller point. So this demonstrates very clearly that if the state allowed the contractor to install the casings to the bedrock interface as specified by the original plans and specifications and as further specified by change order 59, that all of the problems that the contractor encountered with caving soils, water intrusion and the like would not have occurred because the shaft would have been uh, protected by the casings. Now, this still shot you can see zooming in on that screen for the impellers. You can see the slots are perfectly visible, and they're sucking air. They're not sucking water. These types of shafts are very common. Uh, if you case the shaft down to a competent bedrock, you don't need drilling slurries, and you don't need waterheads. It was the fact that Caltrans removed the casing extensions redefined the Santa Margarita formation from a silty sand, sandy silt to a sedimentary rock that caused this problem. Thank you.